right, we're back in this lab again today because the other lab is full of students studying for exams, which is nice. I like to see that. I like to see lots of students in the lab. Uh, results in um, easy to mark <laughs> exam papers. Um, and passing students who have good knowledge, of course, as well. Today, I bring you a leg. So, although in, anatomically we talk about the leg as being the bit distal to the knee, right? And this being the thigh. So really, I bring you a lower limb. And... So, um, we were talking last week, we were looking at the pelvis, we were looking at the pelvic floor, and I was thinking about something that came up in teaching, which is the femoral triangle. We were talking about hernias and inguinal hernias and femoral hernias and things like that. And I thought since we were looking at structures in the region of the pelvis, we could do a very little step sideways anteriorly to the femoral triangle. So what is the femoral triangle? Why are these anatomical places useful to know about? And what goes through it? What can you find there? All right, should be, should be fairly short. I don't do anything briefly, do I? Um, right, okay, how much can anybody really talk about the femoral triangle? So what is the femoral triangle? So the femoral triangle is a triangle in this space here. Do you see where we are? So, so here's the knee, here's the pelvis, so here's the pubis bone, here's the anterior superior iliac spine. So really what we're looking at is, here's the inguinal ligament. So the inguinal ligament is, as I've said before, it's where the, um, the external oblique muscle of the abdominal walls comes down, curls around, and you get the inguinal canal forming there. We talked about it very briefly when we looked at the male reproductive system. So the inguinal ligament then is this, is this ligament where linking the anterior superior iliac spine here to the, the pubis here. Pubic tubercle, pubic tubercle. And the reason the inguinal ligament is so important really is because um, there's quite a lot going on here. It's the boundary between the lower limb and the abdominopelvic cavity, which means that if you're a structure and you want to get from the abdominopelvic cavity into the lower limb, then um, you may need to pass under it. And we see a bunch of structures here doing that. Um, and also what we tend to not see in models, we tend to also lose in prosections when we dissect, is the fascia. So we have lots of fascial layers don't we? Um, forming compartments in the body, covering muscle groups, holding things together, giving us our shape. And we've lost these in the models. But there's, there's a fasciolata, which is like a stocking covering the lower limb. And that ends of the inguinal ligament. And that's where we meet a bunch of fascial layers of the abdominopelvic cavity and the abdominopelvic walls, they come together there. So that's the inguinal ligament here. And you, and you can palpate it on yourself, particularly if you find those two bony landmarks. So it's a good anatomical landmark and it forms part of the femoral triangle. So the femoral triangle is here. It's duh, 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 here, right? So we've got the inguinal ligament, this muscle here, this is sartorius. So this is quadriceps, quadriceps femoris here, and sartorius is going from um, the anterior superior iliac spine, it's going from here around to uh, the pes anserinus. Um, we're medial here, so this is the tibia around this side. Anyway, sartorius aside, the inguinal ligament is forming the superior margin of the femoral triangle. The medial edge of sartorius is forming the lateral wall of the femoral triangle. And then this muscle here, these are the adductors here in this medial compartment. This is adductor longus, the long adductor muscle here. And the adductor longus is forming the medial border of the triangle. So using those edges, we have a triangle, and that then is the femoral triangle. That's all the femoral triangle is. And you can see immediately on this model, we have some interesting structures there. So the reason the femoral triangle is useful is you have a patient, you're worried about their cardiovascular system, particularly of their extremities, you want to palpate their pulses, right? So you want to check the pulse 
the pulse is to the lower limb. So you find the femoral triangle and you can find the pulse of the femoral artery here. Likewise, you can also check the pulse of the popliteal artery and dorsalis pedis and that sort of thing, right? And you want to check and see if there's a nice, strong, steady pulse. Um, and that'll tell you about the blood flow to the lower limb. Now, if this is the femoral artery here, femoral meaning thighs, so all these structures are kind of becoming femoral here. This here is the external iliac artery. So it's a branch from the common iliac artery that's divided up here. And the external iliac artery, we just change its name to the femoral artery once it passes inferior to the inguinal ligaments. That's another reason why the inguinal ligament is important. It's an anatomical landmark. So the vein next to it is the femoral vein and that's draining that way. So it's the femoral vein. And then as it passes under the inguinal ligament that can, becomes the external iliac vein here, right? And then the nerve is the femoral nerve. And that just, that's just called the femoral nerve from when it appears all the way down here. So it doesn't change its name. And can you see how we have vein artery nerve? So you find your femoral triangle in your patient, you can palpate the artery, and then you know that lateral to the artery is the femoral nerve, medial to the femoral artery is the femoral vein, V-A-N, van, from inwards to outwards. Uh, finding the vein, why is that useful? Well, say you want to stick a needle into um, the cardiovascular system. Maybe you want to get to a renal vein. You can, of course, put um, a needle um, and whatever thing you want to pass into the renal vein. You can pass it into the, the femoral vein, up the internal iliac vein, into the common iliac vein, then you're into the inferior vena cava, and you could pop out into one of the two renal veins if you wanted to, or you could send your needle all the way up to the right atrium of the heart and into bits of the heart. So actually, by accessing and finding this vein down here in the thigh, in your femoral triangle, you could do surgical procedures with a wire in the heart or in other, in other blood vessels, you see. So it's an important anatomical landmark. And knowing that the nerve is here, and that the artery is right next to it, tells you to be very, very careful. Um, now, the femoral triangle here, as I've, said, the, the, as I've said, the lower limb is covered in this fascia lata stocking, right? Which you've got to imagine is a big, long stocking and it comes all the way up here. One thing, the other thing we can't see on this model is the, is the, are the superficial veins of the lower limb. Now you know about the superficial veins of the lower limb because you've probably seen varicose veins. So veins don't have a muscular wall like arteries do. Arteries are great at withstanding high pressures. Um, veins don't have a muscular wall. They're not so good at withstanding high pressures. You've got to send your blood all the way back from your toe, up your lower limb and up through your pelvis, abdomen, and back into your thorax, right? So there's a lot of weight, a lot of pressure, a lot of weight of blood on the veins, and they've got valves in them to make sure that the blood flows in one direction. But if you put too much weight on these things, then it can stretch and, you know, you can have problems which causes varicose veins. So the great saphenous vein runs all the way up the leg, so you can find it anterior to the medial malleolus, and it runs up the the lower limb, and it's very superficial, it's just underneath the skin, you'll see it in skinny people, you'll be able to see it in everybody down here, but it's a really, really long vein, it's the vein that um, used to get used in coronary bypass surgery, I don't know if it still does, you could cut a bit out, rejoin it, turn it around so the valves aren't a problem, and then use it to repair coronary arteries in the heart, right? Because it's a nice long vein, it's easy to get to. I don't know how much that's still used. Um, but the great saphenous vein drains into the femoral vein here. So there's actually a, a kind of a weakness in the fascia there, which the vein passes through. Um, a couple of other terms, femoral canal and femoral sheath. So if this is a femoral triangle, these blood vessels and what have you are passing within the femoral sheath beneath the inguinal ligament. Now, the other thing I didn't mention was that the floor of the femoral triangle is made up of a couple of muscles. Here's pectineus here. This here is psoas major. There's iliacus, psoas major and iliacus come together to form iliopsoas. So we've got iliopsoas under here and we've got pectineus, they're forming the floor. Now those muscles are moving the femur, particularly the um, psoas major or iliopsoas muscle is, is flexing the knee at the hip. 
right? All right? So it's doing this movement. What that means is there's quite a bit of movement around here. So for one thing, you want these blood vessels to be able to move freely as the hip is flexing. So they're surrounded. So the fascia that I was talking about, these fascia come together and blend and they kind of form this sheath around these blood vessels. And in a nutshell, what that does is it allows all of these structures to move nice and freely over one another, nothing catches, so you can flex your, your hip and extend your hip and do all sorts of things with your hip, and all this moves around, it's all nice and safe and, and what have you. So that's the femoral sheath in there. Now the femoral canal is a little bit different. The femoral canal is the space between, it's medial to the femoral vein, so it's between the femoral vein and the pubic tubercle, and it runs underneath the inguinal ligament. Now that's the femoral canal, so that's a space there, and it's got a bit of fat in it, it might have some superficial, um, it might have some lymphatics linking superficial and deep inguinal lymph nodes, which we have around here as well. But what that means is there's a bit of space for the femoral vein to expand into if it needs to, you know, so if pressure increases in the thorax and the abdomen, because you're doing a valsalva maneuver where you lift his, you know, so if, some, if pressure is impeding blood flow back into the abdominopelvic cavity, then the femoral vein can expand into the femoral canal. But where all this comes from is we were talking about hernias, right? Um, it means that there's a weakness here and it's possible for abdominal contents, like loops of small bowel, to pass through the, the femoral canal, through this space here, if they're forced out. And uh, you get that to different degrees. It's fairly rare. I think it's more common in women than men because there's a bit more space around here. You've got wider pelvises and what have you. Um, I might be wrong, man. And it might be a temporary thing. The, the femoral hernia might push in and then pull back out again. Um, no big deal. Or it might get stuck, which would cause pain, maybe nausea. And if, it, if the, the small bowel gets pushed through and kind of gets twisted and and you get a bit of a volvulus and it gets occluded, you know, so the blood supply to the, vowel, the bowel gets cut off. Massive pain, feeling really unwell, nausea, vomiting. And of course, you'll be able to palpate a lump here because that small bowel, whatever's herniated through here, will be forming a mass in this small space. You know now where the femoral triangle is, so you'll go and palpate the femoral triangle and say, oh, there's a mass there and you've got all these other symptoms. Right, we know what the problem is. Um, so that's the femoral canal, that's the gap medial to the femoral vein running under the inguinal ligament that's a potential canal between the abdominopelvic cavity and the, the femur. The other thing is, um, you see where these blood vessels are going? If we take sartorius off, there's a canal and here there's a subsartorial canal, this stuff runs under, but hey, we should do that another day. Oh, there's so much fun stuff to talk about. Um, so femoral triangle, of course, the, the anterior, so like the, the top, the roof of the, um, the femoral triangle is formed from layers of fascia and skin. So we've talked about the floor and the roof, we've talked about the walls and the edges, we've talked about the structures that are passing through, we've talked about the femoral sheath, the femoral canal. There you go, that is the femoral triangle. Um, try and palpate your femoral pulse at some time when it's convenient, and you'll be in the femoral triangle. Also, you can palpate the bony bits as well, and that sort of thing, you can, yeah, anyway. All right, short and sweet, see you next time.